earthquakes, all the uh, cancers, all the, all the other kinds of deaths and morbidity. I know when I was reading your book on bioterrorism, I started feeling very insecure. It was really amazing, all mm -hmm. the conditions, all the problems, all the symptoms. And of course, for uh, someone not in the medical field, you start wondering, is that flu, is that cold, something more? Well, uh, yeah, I mean, it's a lot more than flu, but that actually brings me to an interesting point that is something that uh, the listeners might be, able, might be interested in. Um, bioterrorism diseases are very often very hard to diagnose right away. In other words, a lot of them come in looking like a bad flu. And it's not till a little bit later, and sometimes when it's too late, that you find out that it's more than a flu. Well, one thing that can speed up the diagnostic process for the doctor is if you folks get your flu shots. Because if you get your flu shots, that enables the doctor right away to eliminate influenza as one of the causes of your problem. But the usual inclination is not to go to the doctor for a cold or flu. You're not feeling well, you have some symptoms of fatigue and irritation, and you just say, oh, I must have the flu, I'll get over it. So you don't even go to the doctor. Right, well, and most of the time that works. <laughs> uh, but the problem is, is that that's what happened to some of the people in the post office during the post office attacks of anthrax. They came to their doctors, their doctors said, Oh, well, it looks like just a little gastrointestinal upset or take some Tylenol or whatever, but a few days later they were at the point of death. The so, medical field, uh, the, the professionals really have to be a little more alert and be willing to tell somebody it's okay to come and be told you might just have the flu or you might not. Yeah, but it, it's very difficult even if you do show up. Un until it progresses to a certain point, it's very difficult. So what can we do to do something about this? One thing is communication among medical people because if they can communicate and say that, uh, well, gee, this is unusual, or if even somebody that's not a doctor says, gee, I had this neighbor and this neighbor and that neighbor and that neighbor, and they all had this strange kind of flu at the same time, you know, let me talk to them or maybe let me talk to somebody who might know a little bit more about it because it's, if if let's say a crop duster flies over a city and releases anthrax or plague or whatever it is, you're going to have at the same time a lot of cases of something a little bit unusual. So that the first person that puts that together, and if that person can put it together even faster with the help of the kind of books I've written and you know just general training, and just general in, uh, and just your books in, really are so informative mm -hmm. everything from describing the condition describing how one can get it to looking at the symptoms and what can be done thank you I've tried to make it very practical yes uh, because there are things that you can take away from it there's not much we can do but there is something that we can do about it and one of the most important things and one of the reasons that I wrote these not just for a medical audience but so that they can be understood by a general audience as well is that there are things like identifying that first case because the person who can put those first things together can save tens of thousands of lives because people can get antibiotics in time if somebody connects the dots. Uh, You've also brought with you some interesting pictures. Uh, actually, some of them are pretty gory. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Would you like me to run through them? Please. Well, uh, first, uh, this one here, this uh, shows people uh, lining up for the uh, vaccination for smallpox. You know, the World Health Organization uh, claimed that smallpox was eradicated. Yes, I and, thought that it was all gone. Well, and yes and no. It was gone from general circulation. And although I was always a little bit skeptical about that because I felt it's still a good idea to get a shot. So they did the wonderful political uh, uh, action of giving the only two remaining official smallpox stocks in existence, one to the CDC in Atlanta, the Centers for Disease Control, and the other to the Soviet Union, one of their labs. Well, we can be trusted, but the Soviets uh, took that material and they eventually were producing 20 tons or so of smallpox per year in a small lab stuck away in, not a small lab, a big lab stuck away in Siberia. 
So um, it's actually it's kind of scary. It's there available. It's there, and with the breakdown so of the have Soviet to get Union, the, uh, various vaccinations. Well, they've—they're not officially giving it, and I'll explain why in a second. Let me show you another gory picture. Uh, this is one of uh, somebody with smallpox and with the pustules that are breaking out all over his body. Quite infectious. Now this shows you um, some shots of uh, why it's so difficult sometimes to deal with bioterrorism because this is chicken pox. And by the way, this is a reason why everybody should get their chicken pox uh, immunizations because that is a very good public health method of helping doctors rule out chicken pox uh, as a cause of the uh, problems uh, when you, they come in for an unusual kind of rash. So you can help speed up the diagnostic process and really save many lives in, in the process because if you can vaccinate the people who are surrounding a smallpox case, then you can really help a lot of people. And this is uh, syphilis here, this one here, this rash. It looks very similar. Now, one of the problems, of course, with getting immunizations, and this is why the government is not pushing immunization for smallpox now, is you see this charming person here. Um, this is a reaction to smallpox vaccination. The smallpox... In other words, you can catch the condition from a vaccination. Well, not the condition, something very similar. Uh, to vaccinate against smallpox, we use a live virus called vaccinia, which is in the same family. And if it uh, comes, if it reaches somebody who has some sort of sensitivity to it, uh, or touches it and spreads it over his or her body, uh, it can go all over and can really be an extreme problem. And that's why, in general, the government is limiting the number of person, people to whom they're giving vaccinations. And this is a picture of the lungs of somebody who had anthrax. It starts to fill up with fluid all over. And uh, talking about the Black Plague in the Middle Ages, this is what they call a bubo, which is uh, from the bubonic plague. Um, Here's, on, here's a big, big uh, growth on somebody's thigh has, that has plague organisms in it. And this is why it's called the Black Plague. It looks black. Because it would cause gangrene of the fingers and other parts of the body, and the person would gradually die from the gangrene and the fever. And uh, as you see, it's black. So it's pretty gory stuff. It really is. Definitely. And so you had the first picture here of, of the vaccinations. How many vaccinations are going on for all these various conditions? And Very little, unfortunately. Uh, some need to be developed because some of these diseases, particularly the hemorrhagic fever viruses, which I find to be about the scariest organisms around uh, because they can practically turn your, the inside of your body into mush within a week or so. Um, we, uh, many of those don't have any treatment at all, so sometimes the best course is avoidance. Um, hopefully there are people who are working on vaccines for some of these problems, uh, and uh, hopefully that will be helpful, but right now there isn't so much available. If you're in the military, they may give you an anthrax vaccine uh, because they might be worried about your coming across uh, biological warfare. In your books and on the CDs, you tell some things that we should be doing. Could you yeah. sort of summarize for us what we should be on the alert for? I think uh, one thing, of course, is political. We want to bring the battle to the countries where the people who are making it uh, are making it, rather than giving them a free reign to come into the United States. So that's one important thing. Uh, I think in terms of personal protection, uh, I mentioned getting your flu shot and getting your chicken pox and just general awareness, just learning about the diseases, learning how you can identify them quickly is such an important public health measure. We only then, have for, uh, a few minutes left, so why don't you tell us about some of these other conditions and, and diseases? Okay, so another is botulinum. Botulinum is actually a toxin produced by a bacteria. And one little hint is that if you're ever caught in a botulinum attack is that you should use something like some piece of cloth or fabric to cover your nose and mouth uh, while you're in the middle of that attack because that will limit the amount that you breathe in. Uh, so anyway, that's an extremely dangerous toxin and of course the concern is that it could be spread in an aerosol form. 
Uh, hemorrhagic fever viruses are a little rarer. Uh, they're a lot rarer. They're usually from areas like South, a South America, Africa, 